This video brought to you by Loot Crate. Go to trylootcrate.com slash halocanon and use promo code BRIDGE10 to save 10% on a new subscription. Stick around to the end for more details. Welcome back, Canonites, for a special episode of Halo Canon, one that I've wanted to make to some degree since I started this channel. Today we'll be addressing some common and not so common misconceptions about Halo Reach. There are many that have arisen over the years since the game's release, with varying degrees of popularity, and though I doubt I'll cover them all here, I figured it would be nice to cover a few today. There are a number I was able to gather thanks to suggestions on Twitter, and rather than try to organize them, we'll just address them as they come up and the campaign. As you may have heard already, my voice hasn't 100% recovered from sickness last weekend, so bear with me. First up, Halsey is George's mother. This one popped up very early on and is born from George's accent. In British English, ma'am sounds a lot like American English's mom, leading to the confusion. If George was actually Halsey's son, he would have addressed her as mum, given his British accent. Of course, simply turning on the subtitles clears this up pretty quickly too. Our next misconception isn't really about Halo Reach, but something born from Halo Reach, and that is the idea that Halsey knew about the Spartan 3 program before Ghost of Onyx. While it is true that Halsey meets Spartan 3s in the form of Noble Team prior to Ghost of Onyx, that doesn't mean she suddenly knows about Spartan 3s. Spartan 3 refers to a specific program. After meeting with Noble Team, all Halsey is aware of is that somebody is making Spartans without her knowledge and oversight. In the journal included with the limited and legendary editions of Halo Reach, after meeting with Noble Team, trying to figure out exactly what Noble Team are and who created them. So to sum up, meeting Noble Team doesn't mean that she suddenly knows about Spartan 3s, just that somebody else is making Spartans. In fact, in her journal, she actually thinks that they're another group of Spartan 2s created by some other program. It isn't until Halo Glasslands that she actually puts two and two together and realizes that Noble Team were Spartan 3s. Misconception number three, George is alive. When George 052 Noble 4 sacrificed himself to activate the slipspace bomb and take out Long Night of Solace, most accepted that that was it for George. However, some have clung to the hope that George survived, teleporting to some random section of space. Sadly, that is not the case, and the misconception is born from a misunderstanding of how slipspace works. So, there are two, technically three, possible outcomes that could have occurred as a result of firing the slipspace drive. The first actually does allow George to survive, for a time at least. When a slipspace drive is activated, it doesn't open a portal from one location to another, generally speaking. That can be done, such as with the portal over Void to the Ark, but ship-mounted slipspace drives open a portal into slipspace. Once in slipspace, a ship, under the power of its standard engines, heads towards its destination. Technically speaking, the ship is traveling at sublight speeds, but by going into slipspace, they take a shortcut of sorts, allowing for faster travel from a real space perspective. So, when George activated the slipspace drive, at best he would have been teleported into slipspace, specifically a part of slipspace right over reach where he would remain. Now, in this scenario, George could have theoretically used Ardent Prayer and its slipspace drive to exit slipspace and thus survive. The problem is that George likely wouldn't know how to pilot the ship, and that assumes that he was alive in the first place. The second possible outcome is that George would have been killed by the radiation given off by the slipspace drive. Slipspace drives give off tons of radiation when activated, something we directly see on two occasions in Halo Goes of Onyx. The drive brought to Arden Prayer was unmounted, unshielded, and would have blasted anything nearby, including George, with tons of radiation. Admittedly, it's hard to say how deadly that radiation would have been in the immediate, but again, Halo Ghost of Onyx does make note of the dangers of the radiation given off by improperly shielded slipspace drives on two occasions. The final possible fate for George is spaghettification. Human slipspace drives work by creating a series of micro black holes that rip a hole in space-time into slipstream space. Normally, these black holes last for less than a nanosecond and are harmless, and the hole that actually opens into slipspace is opened in front of the ship, out in space. In the case of Ardent Prayer, however, the subspace portal was created within the ship, at the source, which could have easily ripped George apart. No matter how you slice it, George is dead, whether that be from the actual activation of the subspace drive, or from starvation or radiation poisoning later on. Regardless, both Bungie and now 343 considered George dead. 
Our fourth misconception is actually a twofer. Either that Halsey found Cortana in the Forerunner ship under the Bav Katha ice shelf, or that Cortana was created using Forerunner technology. The first is born from the presentation of Cortana in Halo Reach, some people thinking that Halsey's lines here... Knowledge, a birthright from an ancient civilization. This AI is its custodian, and she has chosen you as her couriers. ...were meant to mean that Cortana was a Forerunner AI created to guard the knowledge hidden in the ship. This is not the case, however, as any Halo fan who has read the books would know. Further, in Halsey's journal, it makes it clear that this Cortana was a fragment that was split off from the main Cortana, on board the Pillar of Autumn at this time, to study the artifact. The second misconception that Cortana was created with Forerunner technology seems to be born from the same source, just as a different twist on that misinterpretation of Halsey's words. Cortana is a special AI, to be sure, but there is no evidence that any Forerunner technology was used in her creation, not in any of the books or in Halsey's journal. You can bet that Halsey would have mentioned something like that in her journal if Cortana's creation utilized any Forerunner tech. Our fifth misconception is over whether June died. The short answer is that no, he did not. He appears in Halo Initiation, set in early 2553, and again in Halo New Blood, set in 2555. A catalog post from 2014 also confirmed that June was alive as a Spartan commander in 2558. Even if one wants to be a Bungie purist, Bungie never confirmed whether June died or not. When 343 took over, they had a very similar attitude towards June's fate for many years before the sniper randomly appeared in Halo Initiation. Because I know it will come up, let's also address Fistful of Arrows. This is an excellent comic that many fans hold dear, myself included. Sadly, it's not canon, but even if it were, it still doesn't show June dying. No more than Halo Reach does, anyway. Our sixth misconception is about the canonicity of the Chief Cryopod Easter Egg. Now, to be clear, this is intended to be the Master Chief, but at the end of the day, it's also an Easter Egg. Whether the Chief was already on board or not, he wouldn't be in a random cryopod in the hangar bay. He'd be in the cryo bay. So, it's just a non-canon Easter Egg. Although the real debate that stems from this is whether the Autumn Collecting Cortana takes place before picking up the Chief or after. For a long time, I have been a proponent of the latter, that the Autumn picked up the Chief from Gamma Station, then returned to Reach to pick up the Cortana fragment. Interestingly, Halo Mythos somewhat supports this, saying, quote, Hours before the Autumn retrieved Cortana from Azad, two problems emerged that overshadowed even the loss of Reach. First, the generators that powered Reach's orbital guns had been located by the Covenant. Second, the UNSC circumference, docked at the orbital Gamma Station, was unable to initiate the Cole Protocol. The key word here is hours. The mission to Gamma Station occurred around 0600 hours, and in Halo The Fall of Reach, the Pillar of Autumn had picked up John 117 and Linda 058 from Gamma Station and was preparing to leave the system at 0647 hours. Basically, for the mission to Gamma Station to have occurred hours before the Autumn retrieved Cortana, John must have been on the Autumn before it landed in the Azad shipbreaking yards. Seventh on our list of misconceptions is the big one, the main reason I wanted to make this list. Whether Noble Six survived. The short answer is that he's dead, but let's examine some evidence. First, let's address Bungie's intentions. In the developer commentary for Halo Reach, Marcus Lato says, We spent, I don't know how many weeks, hashing out this idea that what if you came back into the game and actually played the last living moments of your character's life. Yeah. Last living moments are the key words here. The final level of Halo Reach was, in Bungie's eyes, the last moments of Noble Six. When 343 took over, they retained this intention. In the 2011 Halo Essential Visual Guide, Noble Six is confirmed to have died at Azad. He is again mentioned in 2015's Halo New Blood in a conversation between Buck and June. Again, he was confirmed to have died on Reach. While we technically don't see Noble Six get stabbed, he was shieldless and had taken a lot of damage. Short of reinforcements showing up and we'd have to talk about an entire army given what the Covenant had in the area, there's no way Six could have survived. In recent years, some have brought up the return of Cortana, how she was said to have been dead by 343 in the years following Halo 4, is evidence that Noble Six could have survived. This does not hold water. We've had instances of AI creating fragments that can operate independently of the main AI for years. Noble Six is an organic being. The same rules do not apply to him. 
or rather, the rules that apply to an organic being do not apply to an AI. And in point of fact, a fragment of Cortana, the fragment that represented the Cortana we as fans knew from the Bungie trilogy and Halo 4, did die. The Cortana we knew is gone. Forever. While it could be argued that 343 should have handled Cortana better in the wake of Halo 4, an AI coming back from the dead does not suddenly open the door for an organic being to do the same. Our eighth misconception is related to the seventh, that being that Thalvatum, the future Arbiter, was the one to kill Noble Six. This is one that truly perplexes me. The rumor began because the final leak you see on Noble Six's helmet cam is holding its energy sword with its left hand, as you can see here. Sometime over the years, I can't really figure out how, it seems that a rumor began circulating that the Arbiter was left-handed. Thus, the logic goes that the left-handed elite in the final shot of Noble Six's life must have been the Arbiter, since he's left-handed. Now, ignoring that Thel never went groundside during the Battle of Reach and would have long since left the system, chasing after the Pillar of Autumn by the time the final level is set, the idea that Thel is left-handed has no basis. It's never mentioned in any canon material, never hinted at in anything so far as I can tell. The closest we've ever come to any sort of confirmation is seeing Thel wield an energy sword with his left hand in the second bonus cutscene of Halo 2 Anniversary. Even then, this at best says that Thel is ambidextrous, as in Halo 2, 3, and 5, he's seen wielding his energy sword with his right hand. From what I can tell, the rumor was born from the fact that Ripa Morami, the Arbiter from Halo Wars, is seen wielding an energy sword with his left hand on occasion, leading some to think that Ripa was lefty. Ignoring that Ripa is also seen using his right hand, or both hands, to wield his swords, this lefty business somehow got transplanted onto Thel, and the rumor just stuck over the years. It's a really weird misconception that I'm not really sure how it began, but at the end of the day, Thel is not the Sangheili seen wielding an energy sword with his left hand at the end of Halo Reach. Our final misconception is that the Forerunner vessel under the Bath Katha ice shelf contained the coordinates for Alpha Halo. This is actually a rather interesting one, as it's both true and false. If you know anything about the development of Halo Reach and Bungie's general attitude towards the books, you'll know that Halo Reach was basically intended to be a retcon of Halo The Fall of Reach. Bungie generally didn't like other people mucking around in their universe, and when developing Halo Reach, didn't want to be held down by somebody else's work. So, if you consider yourself a Bungie purist, the ship did contain the coordinates to Alpha Halo. However, under 343, the true canon is a bit different. From Halo Mythos, once again, Cortana combined the data recovered by the Iroquois from Sigma Octanus IV with the navigation framework she had extracted from the Forerunner vessel buried on Reach and produced a seemingly random grouping of coordinates. So, what Cortana found in the Forerunner vessel was some sort of navigational framework that allowed her to properly interpret the data found on Sigma Octanus IV, thus giving her the coordinates to Alpha Halo. It's a nice way to combine these two sources without having to retcon too much one way or the other. And so, our list of misconceptions comes to an end. Did you enjoy this? Are there others you'd like me to address? Would you like to see misconceptions addressed from other Halo titles? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want a better idea of how Halo Reach and Halo The Fall of Reach fit together, check out my Battle of Reach timeline. It's a bit outdated at this point, and my intro is a bit condescending and straight up wrong at some points, but it does generally hold true. I need to remake it sometime this year, but for now, the old version will do. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to give a like and consider subscribing and sharing this video around. Also consider subscribing to Loot Crate. By going to trylootcrate.com slash halocannon and using promo code BRIDGE10, you can save 10% on a new subscription to the base Loot Crate offering. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service for epic geek and gamer items and pop culture gear.